So I am cognizant of the fact that it's probably a little bit too early to be doing this type of analysis video because we don't necessarily have all of the results and it's going to take a while for that to be the case. However, I do think it's important that um, we go over some of the largest takeaways. And I think obviously Joe Biden should have done better, theoretically. It shouldn't have been this close between him and Donald Trump. Had Democrats been unified on a single policy vision, even if it was just a single policy, I think the election would have turned out a little bit better for Democrats. Um, now, again, this is uh, it's difficult to prove. It's speculative. But I think that a lot of people can see that we are in a new political era and Democrats, they just they don't know how to adapt. They're still running using an old playbook and you've got to throw out that old playbook and you've got to adapt change with the times and ask yourself this what does joe biden stand for i mean we know that he wants to restore civility and you know the character of this nation but what materially was he offering people come on man Let's look at some exit polls. These were displayed on Fox News live on election night. 72% of Americans favor a government-run health care plan. 71% favor Roe v. Wade. 55% of the country wants more strict gun control. 72% of Americans want a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. 72% of Americans are either somewhat or very concerned about climate change. 70% of Americans want what is functionally a Green New Deal. 79% of Americans favor a mask mandate. 73% of Americans see racism in policing as a somewhat or very serious problem. In other words, most Americans want progressive policies but we didn't really get that from joe biden now the reason why i'm showing you all of these exit polls is you know uh to prove that democrats have to stop worrying about what republicans are going to say because time after time election after election we see them craft their message based on what they think the republican criticism is going to be you can't base your entire identity and policy platform off of how you anticipate republicans are going to attack you that's nonsensical so when it comes to climate change for example joe biden he actually did adopt some elements of bernie sanders climate change plan he spoke with people from the sunrise movement so it still wasn't as good as bernie sanders but it was a measurable improvement compared to what he was running on during the primaries we didn't ever hear him talk about that we heard more about how he doesn't want to ban fracking so democrats have got to stop trying to play 4d chess because all they are doing in an attempt to appeal to republicans and brace for whatever you know um attack that republicans are going to lob against them they're just hurting themselves and turning off the base. And I want to share a clip from uh, the most recent episode of Bad Faith by Brianna Joy Gray and uh, Virtual Texas. I think that Brianna made some phenomenal points here. I, I participated in the we're going to push him left dialogue because I was trying to extract some leverage at the time when there actually was leverage. If people were willing to withhold their votes for him. Now we can all just be really honest about the fact that if the largest protest movement in the history of American history is not going to move Joe Biden an inch on any issue, much less criminal justice, much less any of the issues that are overwhelmingly popular and could have gotten him elected more soundly without this nail biter that we're all enduring right now, then nothing is going to do it. There's like an obvious concerted effort to pretend like this outcome presuming that Joe Biden wins is a net positive and to sweep his colossal failures under the rug, to sweep the fact that he's been a toxic influence on down ballot races under the rug, to sweep the fact that that neoliberalism was on the ballot and it failed horribly under the rug. And I think that the hope that we should have in this moment, what the progressives should be focused on is to exploit this moment for all of its rhetorical value. If this were Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders had caused such a disaster car wreck of a down ballot outcome, Oof. you would never ever hear the end of it. You <laughs> yeah. would never hear the end of it. Oh, God. Joe, this is Joe Biden's monstrosity. And the reason that they're not letting any progressives on TV, the reason why you have this like rotating um, carousel of nincompoops offering their 
failed prescriptions for what should come next after having absolutely no predictive savvy and what has happened is because they know if they let us on there, we'll speak the truth. And the truth is that this has been an abject failure for neoliberalism and all of the all of the rhetoric that led up to this where we weren't supposed to talk about Joe, Joe Biden's real failings or we we couldn't handicap his campaign undermine his campaign in any way because Trump is worse and Trump is a fascist and Trump's going to get my friends supported I respected that enough to be running at 25 percent but now I'm running at 100 percent if people thought I was going to be annoying before I promise you I'm about to be so obnoxious. You are going to pray for the days that I was quote unquote on the payroll. A lot of the things that she's saying and the things that I'm about to say, they're difficult to quantify. So you can dismiss this as just my biased opinion as a leftist, as a socialist. That's fine. I am, you know, accounting for my bias, but I think that there are some things that are pretty self-evident. Joe Biden did have a toxic impact on down ballot races, not just progressive races, but centrist races as well. Now you can contest that. However, when you see someone who lacks enthusiasm, that's not going to really energize people to vote for other Democrats. You need someone at the top of the ticket who excites everyone. We saw the way that Obama excited Democrats. At least in 2008, he ran on hope and change at a time when we desperately needed hope and change and Democrats won everywhere. Joe Biden suppressed the vote nationally. This is exactly what they said Bernie Sanders would do. Now, again, this is difficult to prove quantitatively speaking, but qualitatively speaking, I mean, when you have most people, at least anyone I know, uh, who you know, uh, even some polls indicate this, that they're not voting for Joe Biden because they like Joe Biden. They're voting for Joe Biden because he's not Donald Trump. That's a problem. You can't just expect voters to vote for your party and your candidates because they're not as bad as the other team. You have to offer something to them materially. Let them know how you specifically are going to improve their lives. Additionally, um, Brianna Joy Gray said that his record was basically swept under the rug. That's precisely it. Joe Biden did not perform very well with Latinos. And if you look at his record... Obama administration's record on deportations, the way that he conducted himself during the primary when an immigration activist confronted him. He said, go vote for Donald Trump. Do you think voters are just going to forget about this because Donald Trump is bad? No, that hurt him. That hurt him. Um, and, you know, not to mention the crime bill at a time when we're seeing a historic moment. People are rising up in cities across the country demanding criminal justice reform, police reform. You have the architect of the 1994 crime bill run. And he may have kind of tepidly apologized for his role in mass incarceration, but he hasn't really did a full about face. He won't even commit to full marijuana legalization, which is a criminal justice issue. I mean, decriminalization is one thing, but you picked the wrong person for this moment. And, you know, we're lucky that he was dragged across the finish line. But it didn't need to be this close. It shouldn't have been this close. Um, and I love the point that Brianna made about how this is an object, abject failure for neoliberalism. But guess what? They're not going to tell you about this in mainstream media. They're already blaming the left. They're already blaming socialism. I mean, on CNN, Don Lemon and Anna Navarro were both blaming socialism for Biden's poor performance with Latinos. When during the primaries, Bernie Sanders excelled with Latinos. So let's just step back for a moment and understand why Joe Biden was here. He became the Democratic Party nominee for two reasons. First of all, is that the media convinced everyone and, you know, Joe Biden and Democrats as well, but they convinced everyone that he was the more electable candidate. Exit polls confirmed that most people support Medicare for all. So what that tells you is that people were so hell bent on getting Donald Trump out of office that they sacrificed what they wanted, their own values to vote for someone like Joe Biden, just to have a better shot, ostensibly so, at beating Donald Trump. Had Joe Biden actually adopted a single progressive policy that's really bold, Medicare for all, full pot legalization, and he ran on that, I think that he could have actually excited more people. And he didn't even have to tweak that much. He supported the $15 an hour minimum wage, and we heard about that at the last debate. But if you don't run ads about this in Florida, whether 
putting this on the ballot and it's very popular, that's a missed opportunity. And understand why it's a bad idea to run Joe Biden at this point in time. And I know that this seems like I'm crying over spilt milk, but we have to go through these things. I mean, we got Donald Trump because Obama was a failure. George W. Bush was a disaster. So we wanted change. Obama came along and promised change and he did not deliver on change. So another change agent came along. It wasn't good change, but nonetheless, someone who people viewed as a change agent. Why on earth would Democrats push the person who is from the administration that led to Donald Trump? They pushed Joe Biden. And getting back to the second reason why Joe Biden won this primary is because of the Democratic Party establishment, namely Obama, who moved heaven and earth to make sure that Joe Biden was elected. That phone call he made to Pete, Amy, Beto, and probably Kamala, that made all of the difference. It was what the Republican establishment could never do back in 2016 against Donald Trump. So they united against Bernie. And then when push came to shove, Obama didn't really do much. How many campaign rallies did he you know, um, have for Joe Biden, compare his to Bernie's. So they're never going to be introspective and admit their failures. I think that it is important for the left to do a postmortem and try to figure out where we went wrong because we had a lot of victories as well. And even if having an unpopular Democrat who still isn't as unpopular as Hillary Clinton, but nonetheless, people aren't enthused about him, you know, at the top of the ticket, that may hurt us, but still, I think that we have to figure out what we did wrong. The question is, will Democrats be introspective? I mean, think of how poorly Joe Biden's campaign was. He hid for most of this race. And I think that that was probably a good idea because you don't want to trot him out and have him embarrass himself because he is a gaff machine. But that's not very inspiring for people. Imagine if we had someone else at the top of the ticket who we weren't afraid would tank his polls every time he spoke. I mean, the things that Joe Biden did are baffling to me. He literally touted the endorsement of the former governor of Flint, Michigan, Rick Snyder, who was a Republican, who poisoned more than 100,000 residents in Flint, Michigan. Joe Biden championed Republicans like John Kasich and ended up losing states like Ohio, which she thought that John Kasich would help him win in. Joe Biden's team was out canvassed by Donald Trump, whose team knocked on a million doors, and had it not been for the grassroots effort made by Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar in Michigan and Minnesota, he may not have been pushed over the edge in those key swing states. And it wasn't until a month before the election when Joe Biden decided to finally turn it around and start knocking on doors. And guess what? We were told that Bernie couldn't be the nominee because he would be called a socialist and it would be a disaster. And guess what? Predictably so, he was called a socialist. Joe Biden was called a socialist. So no matter who the Democratic Party nominee is, they're going to be called a socialist. But the difference is that you'd have someone being called a socialist like Joe Biden, who people aren't very enthused about, namely young people and Latinos and people of color, at least young people of color. And then you have someone like Bernie Sanders, who is also going to be called a socialist, but actually has policies, is offering people something. And look, that's not to say that Trump didn't also run a terrible campaign because his campaign, compared to 2016, this time, was a disaster. But still, people want change. They want their lives to improve materially. And what I hope that Democrats take away from this, and I doubt they will, is that they have to stop swimming against the tide. Republicans, they go with the flow, right? They see wherever their base is going and they follow that. They don't care how unpopular their policies are. They have repeal Roe v. Wade in their platform when that is deeply unpopular. But yet, they go where their base takes them. Democrats swim against the tide. So if they learn anything, I hope it's that they actually follow the grassroots. Stop swimming against the tide. Embrace their own base. Stop trying to court Republicans. Donald Trump is very popular within the Republican Party. So rather than trying to flip Trump voters and Republican voters, you have to make sure you have your own base on lock and you turn out non-voters who would register to vote if they truly believed you know you um, gave them something. Now, even though I'm saying Joe Biden is, is a terrible candidate because he is, he still did enough to, you know, make it across that finish line. So at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And Democrats are going to say, well, look, I guess he is electable. I guess it's the case that, you know, we were right and you were wrong. 
but you have to understand that they're going to say that no matter what. If Joe Biden lost, what would they say? Well, it was because he was pushed too far left. In fact, that's what centrist Democrats like Abigail Spanberger are saying, literally, that it's because, you know, uh, they were pushed too left because Democrats said defund the police. That's why Democrats lost. And mind you, only a couple of Democrats adopted defund the police. Cori Bush, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And it may not be very popular yet, but compare that to all of the unpopular policies that Donald Trump supports. I mean, you've got to understand, you have to make the case, and it may not be very popular yet, but you have to turn out your base. This is what they want. Follow where the mass movement is taking you. Listen to them. People on the ground are saying, defund the police. So if you don't like that particular slogan, then explain it to people. Win over hearts and minds. That's what Bernie Sanders did when it comes to Medicare for all. It's not like defund the police will forever be an unpopular position. Make it popular. That's what Republicans try to do. They never try to figure out how to tweak their message to appeal to some centrist Democrats who might flip over to their side. It's only Democrats who do this. And it's why constantly they're not very good at winning elections. And it's because, you know, um, they have corporate donors that don't want them to be progressive, but also it's because they have Democratic Party strategists who are career-minded, who are constantly feeding them bad advice, and then they have idiots on cable media like James Carville who keep making bad predictions, who claimed in a book that I didn't know was real until this week that Democrats are going to rule the country for 40 years. <laughs> no, times change. You have to be able to adapt. And if Democrats take anything away from this election, it's that they have to be able to adapt, make themselves more malleable, at least embrace one or two major policies that the left is pushing for. You can't just rigidly adhere to the strategy that you've had since the 1990s. It's not the 1990s anymore. The Reagan era, the third way Democrat era is over. It's dead and gone. We are in a populist era in American politics because people are suffering. You can't just cling to a strategy that has been a proven failure. Adapt. I mean, this isn't rocket science. I shouldn't have to say this, but I do. <laughs> so, um, you know, regardless, I'm kind of like screaming out into the ether because they're not going to listen to anything that I say, which is why we have to uh, replace the Democrats who are... Um, doing the worst thing imaginable for the country, and that is continuing to court Republicans and remain conservative and embrace neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is for Republicans. Let them have their neoliberalism. We need an alternative on the left. No more big tent bullshit, because when you have a big tent party, well, that means you have no ideological coherency. Stand for something, not just platitudes, but actual policies, and you will become popular again. It's not that hard.